It's my pleasure to welcome you and to call to order the 62nd Annual Meeting of the Center for Research Libraries Council of Voting Members. I'm Fred Heath. I'm Vice Provost of the University of Texas Austin for Libraries, and I'm Chair of your Board of Directors. Here you see the agenda for today's meeting. As the Board and President Riley will review with you the state and the business of your organization. Your presence and your participation today are, are richly appreciated. As the first step in my responsibilities today, allow me to introduce to you the members of your Board of Directors. First, Paul Carrot, University Librarian and Dean of Libraries at the University of Michigan, Vice Chair of your Board of Directors and member of the Executive Committee. Ed Macias, Provost and Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at Washington University in St. Louis, past Vice Chair of your Board of Directors and member of the Executive Committee. Sarah Mahalik, Associate Provost for Libraries and University Librarian, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Treasurer of the Board of Directors, Chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, and member of the Executive Committee. Leslie Weir, University Librarian at the University of Ottawa, Secretary of the Board of Directors, Chief of the Membership Committee, and member of the Executive Committee. Richard Fife, Rosenthal Librarian at the College of Grinnell, Chair of the Collections and Services Policy Committee. Deborah Carver, Dean of Libraries, University of Oregon. Susan Gevins, Vice Provost and Andrew H. and Janet Dayton Neely, Dean of River Campus Libraries, University of Rochester. James Grossman, Executive Director of the American Historical Association. Charles Henry, President, Council on Library and Information Resources. Peter Lang, Provost, Duke University, Chair of the Global Resources Committee. Earl Lewis, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Emory University. James Mullins, Dean of Libraries and Professor, Purdue University. Joyce Ogburn, University Librarian and Director of the J. Willard Marriott Library, University of Utah. And lastly, Bernie Riley, President of the Center for Research Libraries and member of the Executive Committee and ex officio member of all of our committees. Your Chair's report is published in full in the CRL's uh, 2010 Annual Report. And in the interest of brevity, I will point you to that for the, the full report. Today, I will say quickly and uh, gratefully that I am now concluding my second and final year as Chair of the Center for Research Libraries Board of Directors. The opportunity to work alongside my colleagues in service to the principles of CRL and in support of scholarly research has been one truly one of the highlights of my time in librarianship. Likewise, it has been my privilege to work with President Bernie Riley and his dedicated and innovative staff if they have if, as they have advanced our research goals in the midst of the most challenging economic times since our inception in 1949. The leadership of Bernie and the dedication of his staff on our behalf allow all of us to realize that in these demanding times close collaboration is required to advance the research agenda of our universities. Our theme this year is continuity and by that purposeful choice of words. Our president has underscored the commitment of our organization 
to advance two key aspects of our mutual research agenda. The continuing acquisition and maintenance of the print resources that represent the long tail of scholarly research and the ongoing effort to secure persistent access to digital resources that represent an ever-increasing proportion of our information universe. I thank you for the opportunity to serve you on this board. And now I will ask Leslie Weir, University Librarian at the University of Ottawa, to present you the Secretary's report. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I would like at this time to submit the minutes of our last meeting on April, held on April 23, 2010 for approval uh, by the membership. I'd like to ask if there are any comments or corrections uh, to those minutes. Those minutes were posted on the web at the website for the, uh, this particular event. Hearing no questions or corrections, I uh, would like to ask for a motion for approval of those minutes, and I'd ask, like to ask uh, whoever makes the motion to state their name and their institutional affiliation uh, when they make that motion. So do we have uh, someone who'd like to move adoption of the minutes? Thank you very much. And do we have a seconder? I'd now uh, like to ask the membership for, to vote uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, you can vote now. The, vote, the um, minutes are approved uh, unanimously by the uh, participating members. So I'd now like to move on to uh, uh, the membership report for uh, fiscal year 2011. Uh, we had a total membership for 2011 of 254 institutions. CRL enrolled 14 new voting members since July 1, 2010. We have Arkansas State University, Georgia Southern University, Middlebury College, Olivet Nazaire University, Utah State University, Williams College, the University of Central Florida, University of Massachusetts at Boston, University of Maryland, University of Northern British Columbia, University of Northern Florida, North Florida, University of the South, University of Texas at El Paso, whose membership will begin July 1st, 2011, and York University. Uh, we'd like to uh, welcome the new members, uh, and many of those institutions are participating in today's webinar. This uh, increase in membership brought revenues for 2011 of $87,256. Of the uh, 14 new members, 13 of the members enrolled under the new voting member incentive program. The 14th member was the University of Maryland, who was a returning member. You will notice on the uh, table that uh, we, in fact, during these uh, difficult financial times that Fred was speaking of, have, in fact, uh, maintained uh, a, a very uh, good representation of membership. We have increased our membership by 40 members uh, since 2007. And of course the economic downturn taking place in 2008 makes this uh, quite a feat. And um, 
we would like to congratulate especially uh, Bernie and uh, the membership committee for their efforts in um, uh, ensuring that we maintain and, and build our membership. For the membership report for 2012, um, we had a deadline of December 31st, 2010, when member institutions had to notify us of non-renewal. We had six non-renewal notifications, resulting in a decrease of revenue of $77,967. We retained 248 members for fiscal year 2012, and with yesterday's vote of the board of our 251st member, uh, who was approved, we have Sit City University of New York Graduate Center who will be joining us on July 1st, 2011, making for a total of 251 members uh, for fiscal year 2012. I'd like to uh, move on to membership development at this point and highlight that we were extremely active over this year with 10 webinars that included more than 500 participants from 129 institutions. We also hosted five tours, which included 20 librarians from four CRL member libraries and a delegation of librarians from Thailand. We have also been involved in four workshops and forums uh, at the Charleston Pre-Conference, the Global Resources Network Forum, and two annual meeting forums. This concludes the report of the Secretary on Membership, and I'd like to ask if any of the members have any questions. Hearing no questions, I will now turn the podium over to Bernie Riley, and he will present the President's report. Thank you very much. Thanks, Leslie. I, um, you no doubt uh, by now um, have experienced the one-way um, nature of this, this dialogue. Um, we do encourage you, there will be opportunities for you to vote on the budget, to vote on the slate of nominees for board of directors. There will also be um, opportunities for you to talk and to, um, to provide basically talk comment to the um, to us in, when, in uh, Sarah Mahalik's discussion of the budget. At any time during these proceedings, though, you're welcome to chat, uh, to use the chat function to, um, to comment or um, to let us know if you're having any technical difficulties in particular. My, um, my report is, um, is about what we've done in 2011 and what we plan to do in 2012. Um, it's essentially a preface to the budget proposal that, that Sarah Mahalik, the treasurer, will present. Um, our theme this year is continuity, the theme of the annual report and the theme of this meeting, the theme of our collections forum. We, um, what we are about uh, as research libraries is the permanence of the historical and scholarly record. Ultimately, the goal of continuity is responsible stewardship responsible continuation of the collections that we've been entrusted with and we've developed over time. The, um, we are now moving as institutions from operations built around tangible locally managed collections of print and microform primarily to a system of networked and licensed digital resources. There's now a great deal of pressure as you are experiencing to reclaim space by reducing redundant and extraneous print collections, particularly journals. There's pressure to discontinue print and electronic, to discontinue the print uh, side of your electronic journal subscriptions to reduce costs and therefore, we're, and that means we're working um, increasingly without a net. Therefore, in addition to um, Continuity will require um, a number of things in addition to what CRL has traditionally done, which is to maintain permanent collections of little used materials, of criti materials critical for advanced research and for advanced teaching. Today we need to rely on databases. We need to rely on repositories of, um, no, including print archives, um, libraries of record, 
like the, the large research library holdings that we've maintained in institutions like CRL and in member institutions like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, University of California. Um, we need to rely on solid digital libraries like the Hathi Trust and the Meta Archive. These are organizations in which we're investing and we're in which we're entrusting a great deal of our, um, our stewardship um, activities. We need to rely on primary storage databases like LexisNexis, Factiva, and EBSCO, um, or in, sorry, uh, the EBO, um, Early English Books Online, uh, to main, not only deliver, but also in some cases to maintain holdings that we don't hold in physical form. We need to rely on preservation services like Portico and Clocks. We think there is, and with these, um, the great dependency that we've now um, that we now have on some of these external operations, um, we need to. We think that CRL thinks that we need more support. We need more data um, for um, for making decisions about investments and the trustworthiness of these these operations. So we need support. Uh, we believe, CRL believes that the CRL libraries need support, um, data, and also that we need collective action. So, since 1949, CRL has been an umbrella for communities of interest for providing support, uh, data, information sharing, and collection at collective action among communities of interest. The uh, 10 universities that formed CRL in 1949 were acting to uh, support the advanced research agendas that were developing at the big research universities in 1949 after, after World War II. So the um, CRL was formed as a platform for collective action, a platform to build and manage and make available collections that were not able to be held locally by the individual member constituent institutions. The 1960s brought the area microform projects, the formation of a number of area, project, area preservation projects built around interest in particular geographical areas. The area microform projects involved the, some of the foremost specialists in particular area studies, in Latin American studies, African studies, Middle East studies, uh, at, the, um, at a number of the major universities in the US and Canada. These projects built collections. They identified materials that were at risk. They identified materials that were important for long-term, um, important to be made available for long-term access. And so they, um, the area microform projects were an early example of pooling expertise and resources to preserve and ensure the survival and ensure the accessibility of um, critical materials for area-based area research. In the 1990s and early 2000s, the Global Resources Programs came to CRL. These Global Resources Programs were kind of the digital counterparts to the area microform projects. That's a little bit of oversimplification, but the, um, the Global Resources Projects were, uh, again, communities of interest who formed around interests in particular parts of the, um, of the world, Latin America, South Asia, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, the, um, the Middle East. These programs uh, came to CRL from the um, Association of Research Libraries in um, a few years ago, and they've been uh, building and thriving since. The, um, to the area, to the original Global Resources Programs, we've also added two new programs, one uh, on news that's a community of interest around the uh, preservation of news, and another which is around French language studies, the Cisnal project. In 2001, CRL created the, um, the JSTOR Print Archive. The JSTOR Print Archive was formed to um, maintain a complete and uh, permanent archive of print versions of the JSTOR journals. That archive has grown over time and is keeping pretty good pace with the, um, with the growth of the JSTOR corpus. This is a, a feature of CRL that's been particularly useful, particularly to some of the smaller and mid-sized libraries as well. It's enabled them to divest of local copies of JSTOR journals. 
the, in 2002, we did a, for, um, we did a study of repositories on, of shared print repositories in North America. This was uh, commissioned by the Council on Library and Information Resources and looked at a, um, the shared repositories developed by the five colleges of Massachusetts, the uh, colleges, the five colleges of, um, of Ohio, and a number of di other, di other regional consortia uh, looked at the, um, which of these um, shared print repositories were working well, what their features were, why they were working well, if they were working well, what their costs were, and that kind of thing. That was really the beginning of CRL, starting to provide support for decisions being made locally, and decisions particularly about which kinds of journals to retain, which not to retain, how to do, um, how to do shared collections, essentially. In 2003, we hosted, we organized and hosted the Preserving America's Print Resources uh, Conference, which brought together a, um, about 120 research libraries and consortia to address the problem, uh, to, or to um, examine the, um, the potential for the development of print archives, the greater development of shared print collections, and the greater reduction of uh, print collection uh, of, of unnecessary redundancy in print collections. The, um, the conference developed a, a set of um, action items and one of those, the particular action item was that the, uh, these archives need to be built around areas of strength, that these archives need to be built in places or established in places where there is um, already reasons for particular particular kinds of print materials to be maintained and even developed and that um, that had the expertise, possessed the expertise to really provide trustworthy archiving services. So the, um, what the pay for conference told us was that where print archiving is going to work it needs to be built on strength, on existing strength. So continuity being the theme of our meeting. Back to that, Con the continuity for us means the continuation of collections. Um, continuation of CRL's developing of a shared collection. This year, through the Purchase Proposal Program, CRL acquired about a hundred and some thousand dollars worth of microform collections. These are microform collections that were nominated and voted on by uh, the collections people from many of your institutions. The CRL also um, assembled a, a group of libraries to uh, pool funds pull additional funds to acquire several additional uh, microform collections. And those, those collections um, have been acquired and will be available to all CRL members. But the, um, it, it's a, however, it's a, it's a small, relatively limited set of CRL members that are contributing to the cost of those. This is, has worked fairly well. This is a long-standing program at CRL. This is how we've been building collections. So again, communities of interest, these are groups that um, coalesce around shared needs and shared interests and uh, these are the, the groups that guide CRL collecting. Um, we are concentrating in our um, development and um, of, of collections in some areas of strength, um, the area of news and uh, both foreign and U.S. news, that has been a, a particularly um, strong area of CRL collecting for for many, many years, actually from the beginning, one of the first acquisitions, one of the first decisions that the people that formed CRL made was to start acquiring foreign newspapers, start subscribing to newspapers from Europe. Um, we also uh, heavily invested in foreign government documents and in archives of government documents, primarily on microfilm and on collections of, on, and on collecting dissertations from universities outside of the United States and Canada. These are areas that um, and we've continued to develop and will continue to develop. But what we're also doing is, is, is something that's um, is introducing, uh, what we've done in 2011 is introduce some new services, some new activities that have been um, enabled, that we're able to introduce thanks to the support from the, um, <clears throat> the National Science Foundation, uh, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. That is, um, we're doing really three things to help support um, collection development and, and management locally. Um, 
analysis, information exchange, and support for digital access. These are the three services that, um, or the three new areas of serial activity that you'll see reflected in the, the upcoming budget, the budget that we'll discuss a little bit later on. Uh, many of you have already been experiencing these um, these services because we've we've been up and running for um, the better part of the year, and a number of specialists at your institutions have been participating in these these activities and contributing to the activities as well. Um, specifically, analysis. <clears throat> the um, we we really don't think that there is enough information available. Um, to support the kinds of decisions that you're being asked to make at CRO institutions. You're being asked to, um, to make decisions on investment in large digital repositories. In 2009, um, CRL did a, um, performed a, an audit. It took about nine months of um, the Portico digital repository. This audit was designed to determine to what extent, uh, to what degree the Portico was um, serviceable as a uh, trustworthy digital repository, to what extent Portico did what it presented that it did, that did what it would claim to do, to what extent that, uh, to where there were limitations, where there's room for improvement, where there's room for uh, enhancement. The, um, our analysis of the Portico, or the Portico audit was um, informed by our certification advisory panel. Uh, certain members of the certification advisory panel are um, uh, drawn from uh, all sectors of CRL membership. They include uh, library directors, as well as preservation people, as well as collection development people, as well as IT people. Uh, Martha Brogan has chaired the certification advisory panel for